Welcome to episode 40 of Hassett Mentor Review. The year is definitely flying past with only five and a bit weeks left until the end of 2013. I'm very proud that I have stuck to putting together and releasing these episodes each week, bar a few weeks that I've missed. I'm definitely inspired by your questions and positive feedback, so keep them coming. In this episode, we go through and cover mapping your HACCP documentation, how to risk assess raw materials, a roundup of recent food poisoning outbreaks, and a great case study video on the PCA outbreak investigation. Mapping your HACCP food safety quality system. When you have multiple requirements or standards that you need to comply with, I would recommend having a mapping document for each standard. If you write and number your system to one standard, it can become troublesome in the future when other standards or customer requirements are required by your business. Setting up your HACCP food safety documentation logically in the first place will make this whole process a lot easier. When I say to use logic, Break down your system into individual prerequisite programs and then reference or map them to the particular standard. For example, if you get audited to say SQF and it says that you have to have a pest bait map, in your mapping document for that particular standard, you state where in your food safety management system that can be found. If you are looking to find out more on how to undertake an effective risk assessment on your raw materials, I have written an article titled Three Tips on How to Do a Raw Material Risk Assessment. I will put a link in the transcript to this HACCP Mentor Review. I will also be looking to run a webinar on this topic in the future, so if you're interested, just let me know. For episode 40 of HACCP Mentor Review, the action item that I have set for you is to go around and check all your bait stations are secured. You or your pest control contractor can secure these rodent bait stations with chain or with glue. The purpose of securing is to make sure that they stay in place and are effective in controlling rodent activity at your food premises. This week I published a great video that was developed by the US FDA on how they went about investigating the peanut butter food poisoning outbreak back in 2009-2010. If you're interested in how they linked illness in the community to the actual food company involved in this outbreak, it's an interesting watch. You can find the link to this video in episode 40 of Hassett Mentor Review. While we are talking about food poisoning outbreaks, some of the ones getting around at the moment include from the US, the investigation continues of E. coli contamination in ready-to-eat salads produced by Glass Onion Catering and sold at Trader Joe's grocery store locations. So far, 32 people have been reported infected with the outbreak strain of E. coli 0157H7. As of mid-November 2013, 389 people have been infected with seven outbreak strains of Salmonella Heidelberg across the USA, Government investigations indicate the consumption of Foster's Farm brand chicken is the likely source of this outbreak. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have reported an increase in Vibrio parahemolyticus illnesses associated with consumption of shellfish from several Atlantic Coast harvest areas in the USA. Reports posted on October 21st indicate 104 people have been affected so far. And from my home country of Australia, The biggest horse race of the year is held at the beginning of November. It's such a monumental event that parts of Australia even have a public holiday designated on the race day. Anyway, getting to the point, investigations continue into the Melbourne Cup salmonella outbreak from food supplied by Piccadilly Catering Company. To date, the outbreak has been linked to the death of a 77-year-old woman, 11 hospitalisations, 25 confirmed cases and 165 additional reporting symptoms that have not been verified by laboratory analysis. Initial reporting linked the illness to raw egg mayonnaise. Well, that's episode 40 done and dusted. I have some interesting topics coming up in the following weeks inspired from your feedback. If you have anything that you would like to see covered, just leave a comment below this episode. Until next time, I'm Amanda Evans from HassettMentor.com. Thank you.